Hello, everyone. A happy new year to you. Let's welcome in 2021. As we all make our New Year's resolutions, I thought that I would make a video to help you guys through. If you guys have been thinking of making a Style Stable YouTube channel, this is your call to just do it. Come on, do it. You can do it. Honestly, I love making YouTube videos. And the biggest thing that I could tell anyone that if you were thinking of making a YouTube channel, just do it. If you guys uh, just enjoy making videos the reason i made uh a youtube channel is because i loved making videos and that was my creative side it's like some people draw i made videos and yeah so if you guys enjoy making videos like the whole shebang editing filming and everything then uh make your youtube channel just go for it because if it does well if it doesn't at least you tried but yeah, today is the first episode of how to be a Star Stable YouTuber. I'm going to have to break this up because I want to explain as much into each section of being a YouTuber as possible. So make sure to let me know in the comments below if you guys have any questions and I will try and answer them throughout this little mini series, probably just throughout January. I'll be uploading it once a week. So if you guys want to see the second episode of this thing, then it's either going to be on like making up ideas and stuff, but it's probably going to be on how to edit a uh, Star Stable video and the best ways to edit, like the little secret secret in quotation marks star stable youtuber tips and tricks on how to edit an engaging video then make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss that next week but yeah so we're gonna we're gonna start off with how do you record your game what am i doing right now how am i recording my game and stuff like what am i doing i'm gonna run you guys through that and the good thing about this program that i use is that it is completely free let's get into it all right you guys we are here i'm gonna try and keep this as simple as possible if you guys are like how is she recording whilst like record like showing her screen well it's because this thing here is called obs uh obs studio so this is what i used to use for a long time now i use obs streamlabs they're basically the same thing there's literally basically nothing different you can do the same thing so if you guys want me to make a separate tutorial on obs studio i can do that but you can do most of these things in obs studio first things first how do i record this you guys are asking i mean how do i download this wow english well, basically, just search up OBS Streamlabs. Oh my gosh, click the link for Streamlabs and click download. And then it will download and you'll go through the uploading up like the, the downloading and installing settings. Hopefully they're pretty basic for you guys. Basically, I don't if there's any custom things, just do the default. That's what I do. So first things first, yours is not going to look like this. Create new. I think I broke it. Okay, let's let's label this as the tutorial. Tutorial. All right. So this here is called scenes. It's pretty like it's basically just a tutorial. I have a I have a different thing for every single separate thing. Like I've got one for streaming, which means settings are different compared to streaming compared to recording. This is just a tutorial for recording. I'm not going to cover my streaming settings. So if you guys want to see that, make sure to let me know in the comments below. But yeah, let's, we're now in the, but this is what you're going to look at. It's going to be blank and you're going to be like, but what do I do? So first, this is going to be called scene, whatever. You can rename it. I'd probably rename it like either in game or like a star stable, just so you know what you're doing. I'll show you guys my usual recording setup as well after this. Now you're going to have this thing called sources. You're going to have to want star stable open. So you're going to click add a new source and you're going to be like, ah, what is this? And I'm here to explain it all to you guys. So an image is just when you want to add a JPEG image onto your screen. A browser source is if you want to add a, a Google Chrome tab link or something. This isn't used too much. It's mainly used for alerts for streaming. So don't worry too much about any of this stuff. A display capture is basically capturing your entire screen, so your entire monitor. You can do a display capture and just capture your entire screen like this. Because then when you go into Star Stable, it is going to record and everything. But I don't do that for Star Stable. So let's just uh, remove that. You then have game capture. Now to add a Star Stable gamey thing, then this is what you're going to want to do. You want to click on game capture, click add source. Um, you can name it Star Stable. I'm not going to name it Star Stable. 
two because I think I've already got one. I don't know. Then looking for a game to capture. You want to capture... You can either capture any full screen application, but what I do is I capture a specific window and the window that you want to capture is called SSOClient.exe star symbol or whatever yours is called. Now everything else I leave the same and you click done. Now you're going to be like, but it's a blank screen and that's because you have to go into star stable. You guys won't be able to see it, but after that, it will have loaded in like shebang and it's here. Obviously, obviously it's frozen because I use Star Stable in this full screen. To be able to use it like this, I think you might need to have your Star Stable in full screen. It might still work, but anyways, when you're out of full screen, Star Stable does freeze, so that's why it's frozen. Now, everything else is pretty standard. If you guys want to add music directly into it, you just have to do a you just have to do a media source and you can use MP3s. But I don't usually add music into OBS. I do that in editing because you can't control the sound as much in OBS. All right, so that's basically how you're going to get Star Stable there. All of these things over here are basically for streaming, so I'm not going to go through them because I never use these for actual recording. I do everything in editing kind of thing. We're going to move into the settings. Now, there's a little cogwheel thing down here called settings. The general thing, I've never touched any of this. You guys can read through it. Streaming, we're not going to look at that. Output is where it is at. We're going to make sure you select from simple to advanced. I'm going to show you the advanced settings, but if simple is easier for you, then you go for that, but you probably have to figure it out yourself. OBS is brilliant because it is a free software, but the only problem with it is that you have to know your computer and you kind of have to like know what you're doing because there's going to be things that I talk about such as uh, bitrate, which I don't really know how to explain, but unless you have a, as good of, of as, oh my god English, as good of a computer as I do, you do not want to type in three, 30, 300,000, I don't even know how many zeros that is, into it because your computer, it will lag, it will lag so bad, you might break it and I am not in charge of that. So yeah, just switch it to advanced and make sure you're under recording type, set to standard recording path, just browse and wherever you want to like put the final audio files in. I don't do this, but you guys can. I either record in MP4 or MKV. Uh, MKV right there. MKV is probably better because MKV means if your computer accidentally shuts down and you lose power or something, MKV will save your file, whereas MP4 will not. So nothing too different between them. But yeah, I should probably do MKV, but with MKV, you have to do something. And MKV, you cannot put into most editors. You have to convert it to MP4. I'll quickly show you guys how to convert to MP4. So basically, you, you cannot do it in Streamlabs OBS. You can do it in any file converting softwares, but OBS Studio does it well, which is why I still have OBS Studio installed. But you basically get, click File, then click Remux Recordings, click the little dot, 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 and then you open up an MKV file, and then you'll click Remux, and then it will be in that same location, but as an MP4 file. Everything's the same, you'll just be able to edit it. So yeah, that's basically the difference between MP4 and MKV. Now, audio tracks I will get into in just a second, but I have two tracks installed. On the first audio track is going to be my Star Stable sound, and on the second audio track is my audio. This means in Adobe Premiere, when I open it up and I put it in, there will be two layers of audio in my editing software. This will make more sense in next week's video, but basically it means I can make my microphone louder if I need to, or I can make the game sound quieter. I wanted to put a quick disclaimer that you need to check that your editing software allows for multiple audio layers, because I know some of them don't, and there is some workarounds that, but I'm pretty sure maybe things like iMovie, they have a limited amount of uh, sound layers that you can have in the editing software, it'll make more sense when I show you guys Adobe Premiere Pro but basically if you guys don't really like know if your editing software does multiple layers you can try it out but if only one like if only your star stable sound is there just uncheck that and put everything onto the one layer I'll show you guys later in the video and you can actually make the sound in OBS quieter for star stable it's just easier in editing 
Now here we have AMD. You guys will not have AMD unless you have an AMD um, CPU. So you might have NVIDIA. Basically, just make sure you do NVIDIA or AMD, whatever you have. This is going to be an AMD tutorial. NVIDIA, it will look slightly different for, I believe. So you can try and follow this, but there are some great tutorials on the internet anyways on how to use OBS, the best settings. Do not click rescale output output. If you want to rescale the output, then do that at a later stage. This will make your quality worse. All right, the preset, I don't do anything. You guys can basically copy these settings. Just do not copy my bitrate. I explained this terribly whilst I was recording, but I use constant bitrate. Bitrate is kind of like the quality of your video, so you want it to keep a constant bitrate because you don't want it going lower and then higher because then your audio quality will be going up and down. When I'm streaming, I use variable bitrate because sometimes your internet speed, upload speed changes, so you want to make sure that yeah, your quality will change with that, I guess. But yeah, when you're recording, just use constant bitrate. It means your quality is always going to be the same. Fast mode has disabled your target bitrate. Okay, so this one's a tough one. It's going to come to you at like 2,500. But because I have a 4K strain, which means there's a lot of pixels in it, my bitrate has to be higher to be able to get as many, as clear of a shot as possible. If you guys do not change any of these settings, you will probably find that when you record Star Stable, it will be super pixelated, it will be blurry, it'll be bad, it'll be laggy. I'm trying to help you with this, with that, with this, with that. <laughs> oh my gosh. So target bitrate, let's see if I can Google this. So basically, you if even if you have like a normal laptop, it'll probably be about 1080p. So in in this settings right here, you probably want to have about 3000 to 4000. If your computer can handle it, then I definitely recommend always going higher because the higher that number, the more quality you are going to get. But at the same time, it's kind of pointless for you to put an absurd number in there if you're only filming at 1080p. So, you know, just play around with it and find your balance. If you have anything higher than that, basically just do a test. Bring this up by a thousand every single time. For me, I kept bringing it up by a thousand and then you record a small clip and you watch it back and it might still be blurry, you're not happy with it. Put it up another 1,000. I got sick of that, so basically I just ended up typing like a super big number. And I just kind of played around with it. Please note that your target bitrate makes your file size super big. So for a little while, I was filming at like the highest bitrate possible. I have turned it down a little bit. I haven't played around with it too much. I probably could bring it down even more and could make my like rendering times faster, but I haven't. So yeah, just play around with bitrate. If you guys have any questions about bitrate in the comments below, then make sure to tell me and I will try and respond to you as quick as possible. But basically just start at 3000. 3000 should be good. Just do 3000. For me, I've got beast of a computer can handle this much bitrate, things like that. Bitrate's basically, it's like speed. It's like the quality of the video. Bitrate is like the quality of the video. Does that make sense? All right, moving on. Filler data. I basically didn't change any of these. These are all just normal. Enabled, key frame interview, interval two, or view mode basic. And yeah, that's it. Audio, I've got, I haven't changed any of the audio, basically. Everything's the same. So yeah. I will show you guys another way. I'll show you guys the mixer in just a second. The mixer is very important for recording your sound and things like that. In the video, this is where if you want to um, downscale your resolution, I used to downscale my resolution to about 1440p. And then when I rendered out, I do it 1080, but now I just film and I edit and I upload at 4K. You guys will probably have just this first option here is the size of your monitor. So you should probably only have one option there. Just do the biggest option that you can. And when you come down here, I'd recommend just keeping it and keeping it the same. Oh, I clicked a thing. I'd recommend just keeping this one the same. But if you want to only record at 1080p, then do that. But I just keep it the same. Downscale filter. I don't know if I changed that, but if I did, then it's the highest quality you can have. I have common FPS because that's what I was told by a video, I think. And then common FPS values is just 60 because that's the highest that OBS can do, but it looks pretty good in my opinion. You might want to do 30 if you don't have as good of a computer. Streaming, I usually stream at 30 frames per second because it actually makes the quality better. But yeah, 60 FPS. If you can do 60 FPS, then do 60 FPS. Um, I'll show you, I'll insert a clip right now of showing my FPS in the game. 
So here we are looking at like the frame rate of our game. You click on escape or main menu, click settings and you guys can see under graphics there is frame rate. Mine is locked at 60 because I've got something called vertical sync on. Vertical sync stops your frame rate at 60 frames per second. I keep it on because I actually find that my game runs better at 60 frames a second because Star Stable wasn't like really made for 4k. I feel, I don't know, I just feel like my screen has a few like visual glitches if I don't keep it on and honestly 60 frames per second is really all you need to play a game so it's pretty smooth but yeah that is the frame per second thing. In the hotkeys, this is hotkeys you have, start streaming, stop streaming, start recording. I usually set mine to F F9. I'm go not going to press it because that stops my recording, but basically just press the key that you want to use to start recording or you can also just click the record button down here. But yeah, basically just click the button. I use F9 because F9 is not used by anything else really. Say so if you used F1 as your toggle to start recording, you'd find that you're in Star Step, you click F1 and then your user interface would disappear, but you're recording. So then you'd be like, oh, my user interface is gone. So you click F1 again and your interface is back, but you've stopped recording and you haven't realized. So make sure you set it to something that nothing really uses. So F9 I found is a pretty good one. Everything else, I don't use any of the other things. I literally just use start st start recording, stop recording, and I make them the same. So, you know what? Let's do, like, F8. Oh, oh, I'm starting recording on different software. Let's not do F8. F7. F7. There we go. F7 works. Moving on to advanced. I don't think I've changed anything. Actually, I might have changed the video. So, just look at this color stuff. This is what I use. So OBS does use a pretty strong computer, so make sure you've got like a got a strong computer. It can work on laptops, but it hasn't worked very well on my old laptops, but yeah. Pretty sure I've kept everything else the same, but if you guys want to quickly look at this. The only thing I've the only thing I think I've changed is actually just maybe process priority. Honestly, I don't know. It looks good, so I'm not gonna play with these settings, but also color format and stuff I think I've changed. I don't think I've changed any of these other things. So yeah, that's basically it for the settings. Ah! Oh! So yeah, that's everything there. Let's move down to the mixer section down here. Now for your desktop audio, you want to click the little cog wheel next to it and you want to click on properties. This is going to pull up your device. You will want to select your speakers. I can't really tell you which speakers it's going to be, but I have my headphones, the Razer Kraken edition. So it just means when you play sound, it'll play through here and you can see the little bar move. You can see that it, it's made a sound. All right, microphone and stuff. You want to click on the same thing. Click the cogwheel, click the properties and on device, you click your microphone. Uh, the Razer Kraken does have a microphone, but I use my blue Yeti. Done. And then it'll be loaded here. And that's basically that. But I am going to jump over to a different scene and show you guys my filters for the microphone. All right. So here we have my microphone. As you guys can see, if down here, we click on the little cogwheel next to microphone. We go up and you'll see filters. It's not going to have a five next to it. It'll just say filters. Click on that. And I can delete this gain, actually. You can have four filters you can have more than four but these are my things noise suppression means that if i'm quiet it like it gets rid of any background noise kind of thing so you guys can't hopefully will not be able to hear the cicadas anymore things like that this full disclosure this is something that i'm still playing around with these are not my final settings i'll probably use your feedback and change it up so this is your personal preference but basically just like It'll probably come with speaks, but I just go to this one because I thought it was better. I don't know. Noise gate is how much sound it's letting into the microphone. I don't really know how to describe this stuff, but my close threshold is 2356. I'm going to show you guys something really helpful. So if you click the bigger toggle up here. All right. This, you know, before when I spoke about why you want audio tracks. This is why you want to have your desktop audio on track one and then you want to have your microphone on track two. As you can see, you can have track one highlighted, but you want to click it so that it's not green. You want to make sure that one is on track one, two is tra on track two and ignore the camera. The camera isn't there. Something that's super helpful when you're playing around with these audio filters to make your microphone sound good is to click on monitor off and click monitor only 
or monitor output and now you can hear yourself and it's really annoying but yeah now when you're playing around with the filters you can hear it so if i turn this up or down you can hear the difference so just play around with that if i'm speaking weirdly it's because i can hear myself i should turn that off but it's fine so these are my settings close threshold negative 23 open threshold negative 56 attack time 25 hold time 50 release time 50 so those are my settings my literally my headphones just cut out so i can't even hear myself right now okay so to add these ones you just have to click the plus button as well you click the little down button and then you can see all of these things i forgot this is not the best tutorial but this is what i do my next filter is called a noise gate oh no it's called a compressor this is the first compressor you're gonna do you're gonna have ratio 10 threshold negative 6 attack 1 release 15 output gain 0 second compressor is gonna be a ratio 3 Threshold negative 24, attack 3, release 15, and output gain. I have it at 10.5, but you can put it a little lower. This is what I'm playing around with, and this is what works with my microphone. You guys really need to play around with it. I cannot give you everything on a silver platter. I've played around with it as well. So I have the microphone Blue Yeti X, which means it might sound different to my Razer Kraken and things like that. So you just have to play around. These are probably the four filters that I recommend and just play around with these levels with that monitor thing on and off so you can like hear what it sounds like and yeah, basically just troubleshoot, troubleshoot, troubleshoot. But I think that's everything. Once you're ready to record, you just click the little record button or you click the uh, keyboard bind the shortcut hotkey that I showed you guys. As I promised at the beginning of the video, I said that I would show you guys what my recording system looks like. So I have four scenes here. To add a new scene, you come up here and you click add and you can add a new scene, which means everything's blank again. I do have a thing, but I'll show you guys that in a streaming video if you guys want to see that. But yeah, you can then just add your sources again and it's basically just a new slate. I've got the first one, which is my webcam. So this one, I've just got a background layer and then I've got, okay, I've got my normal layer, but this is just because it's Christmas. You guys can see the Christmas background. I've then got my um, Star Stable game because at one point I was playing around with having Star Stable behind it. Then I've got the webcam background. I made this on Photoshop. Oh. Then I've got webcam uh, filter, which is just a type of camera that I had. Uh, this is a Droid cam is a different type of camera. My camera is my EOS, my Canon 90D. Is it a 90D? Yeah, my EOS Canon 90D. And an audio capture. I'm pretty sure this was just music that I had playing. So, but this was just for, let's see, I don't know. I think I was playing around with something. Yeah, as you guys can see, I just play around, but I know how to use OBS. So I just play around. But if you guys are struggling, like just Take it one step at a time. Ask me questions in the comments below and I will try and help you guys as much as possible. My in-game one, I have my monitor, which you guys can see it's called main. So this is my main monitor. I've then got my star stable. I've also got my webcam back and my webcam for when I do webcam videos. It's just hidden when I don't. And I've also got Discord for one video that I did, which I had the Discord chat because I asked Discord what they like, what course they wanted me to buy and I wanted they were talking in chat so i just put that in the top show face and horse is what i made for the end of my webcam videos so then there will be webcam and then it'll also be horse like my star stable next to me and then mobile is what i have for when i'm filming mobile videos it's, it's blank right now because i don't have the iphone set up and stuff but yeah that's basically that if you guys need any help with Maybe you want to record on your iPhone, even though you can't play iPhone yet. But if you guys want help with that, then I can uh, help you guys with that. I'm actually going to quickly show you the tutorial thing. So add, uh, to get that custom transition that I have, you want to click add tutorial and then you want to click a stinger. I kept saying tutorial instead of transition. I'm just here editing and I'm like, why did I say tutorial? Okay, it's fine. I, just <laughs> I meant transition. That took me forever to figure out. And then you can click a video file and I'm just going to pull it up. So I've got mine right here. It's called Christmas Transition AVI done. And 
I'm actually gonna delete that one. But basically, yeah, then it'll be done. And then I have my transition point at uh, 1100 because that basically means if you don't set that timer, then it means you'll click over here and it'll change right away. It won't look fluent. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but I wasn't really planning to explain that. So yeah, that's how I get the custom transition. And I can show you guys how to make your custom transition in another video if you guys want me to. I made this myself in After Effects, but yeah. This is good because it's a free software, but it does use a kind of good computer and you do need to play around with the settings a lot. But yeah, that is how I record using OBS. Please remember to let me know in the comments below if you guys have any questions whatsoever and I will try and answer them or I will make a new video to answer your questions about OBS because it can be kind of hard to text it and like try and explain it through text. So it's easier to just show you guys. But yeah, if you are excited to learn how to how I edit my videos, then make sure to subscribe. Also give this video a thumbs up because if this video does well, then I will know that you guys like these YouTube tutorial things. So yeah, I hope you guys are having an awesome day or have had an awesome day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Happy New Year, everyone. I love you all. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I love you all so much. Thank you for following me in 2020. Hopefully we will have some good stuff planned in 2021. But I love you all so much. Bye. Yeah.